Well, consider us traumatized. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 terrifying deaths in animated movies. What's the matter, beast? <laughs> Too kind and gentle to fight back. For this list, we're looking at the scariest, most horrifying death scenes in animated films, including Disney movies. We'll be focusing on deaths that terrified us rather than broke our hearts. Consider this your spoiler alert. And here's my little secret. I killed Mufasa. Number 20, Gaston, Beauty and the Beast. Come on out and fight! After an intense battle atop the Beast's castle, it looks like maybe Gaston and the Beast might part ways without spilling any blood. Since the phrase live and let live is foreign to the egotistical hunter though, Gaston literally stabs his prey in the back. This proves to be Gaston's undoing as he loses his balance and plummets to his death. Let me go! Please! Don't hurt me! I'll do anything! Anything! If you think Gaston could have miraculously survived the fall somehow, the animators ruled out this possibility by adding a skull and crossbones to his pupils. How subliminally horrifying. <laughs> Number 19, The Iron Giant. The Iron Giant. You stay, I go. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's the Iron Giant intercepting a nuclear weapon. In an effort to save the town of Rockwell from destruction, the metal-eating robot makes the ultimate sacrifice when he collides with a missile launched by the US military. Much like Superman, whose heroic deeds help inspire this noble act, the giant is a living weapon who chooses to use his powers to protect the innocent. I love you. While heroic, his death is also incredibly sad, as we witness it through the eyes of 11-year-old Hogarth Hughes, the giant's best friend and the only person who doesn't think he's a monster. Thankfully, the film's final shot shows that even a nuclear blast won't keep this giant down. Superman. Number 18, Agatha Prendergast, Paranorman. What? First appearances aren't what they seem in this underrated dark fantasy film from acclaimed animation studio Laika. In his attempt to lift a witch's curse on his hometown of Blythe Hollow, young Norman Babcock discovers a terrifying truth. The vengeful witch is actually an innocent little girl. In a gut-wrenching flashback sequence, Norman discovers that little Aggie Prendergast was a medium like himself who lived in Blythe Hollow with her mother in the 1700s. Do you have anything to say for yourself? I was only playing. Mistaking her ability to speak to the dead for witchcraft, the townsfolk put Aggie on trial and sentenced her to death. Killed by religious zealots just for being different, it's easy to understand why this sweet little girl became a vengeful monster in death. Number 17, Scar, the Lion King. I did it so they can hear you. I killed Mufasa. Being something of a Shakespearean villain, it's only appropriate that Scar is given a properly dramatic send off. Unlike Gaston, Scar survives his fall after fighting the film's hero. You, you don't deserve to live. But Simba, I am family. It's what's waiting at the bottom of Pride Rock that leads to his ultimate demise. Turns out that Scar's hyena lackeys don't appreciate being thrown under the bus. As fire engulfs the area, the hyenas surround their former boss, maul him to death, and likely devour his carcass as the camera pans up from the massacre. Oh well, circle of life. Friends, I thought he said we were the enemy. Yeah, that's what I heard. Ed? <laughs> Number 16, Michelle's parents, Once Upon a Forest. Something's wrong. The woods are far too still. We must hurry home. This oft-overlooked film's environmental message is hammered home early on with a pair of tragic deaths. After an overturned tanker truck spews poison gas into the forest of Dapplewood, the young badger Michelle rushes home to make sure her parents are okay. In a panic, Michelle enters her gas-infested home, prompting her friend Abigail to go in after her. 
We're not waiting. Cover your mouth! Don't breathe the gas! Warned by Michelle's uncle Cornelius not to breathe in the gas, Abigail saves her friend but can do nothing for Michelle's parents, whom she finds dead in their kitchen. The sight of Michelle's father slumped over the kitchen table and her mother sprawled out on the floor is a haunting image, especially for a film that refers to its characters as furlings. No furlings! There's a deadly gas in there! Number 15. Professor Radigan, the Great Mouse Detective. Basil, look out! As hard as Radigan attempts to present himself as a refined elitist, he's really nothing more than a filthy rat. When his schemes fall apart, Radigan lets the beast inside run rampant as he pursues Basil and little Olivia inside Big Ben. <laughs> The use of sound in building music adds to the tension as Radigan hones in on our heroes, practically ripping Basil to shreds with his claws. But as the clock bell tolls, Radigan's time on Earth officially runs out, plunging him to an appropriate fate for a rat. The game's not over yet! <laughs> Number 14, Edwina, Chicken Run. Rule number one about prison escapes, not everyone makes it out alive. Then again, it would be a lot worse for the Tweety Farm chickens if they stayed put. Before Rocky the Rooster arrives and inspires the chickens to make a break for it, the doom hanging over them is illustrated by poor Edwina. Bunty, why didn't you give us some of yours? I would have. She didn't tell me. She didn't tell anyone. After failing to lay eggs, the hen is singled out by the evil Mr. Tweety, who snatches her by the neck and hands her off to his equally sinister wife. Mrs. Tweety takes Edwina to a shed and, in silhouette, we see her bring down an axe on a chopping block. While Edwina's death occurs off screen, the later shot of chicken bones on the Tweety dinner table leaves no doubt about her fate. Number 13, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Can't you get up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always get up. <clears throat> the coffee's probably not a good sign. Even in a film overloaded with Spider-Men and women, losing even one of them is a lot to take in. When Miles Morales stumbles upon Peter Parker, there's every hint that the elder Spider-Man will become an important mentor for the young aspiring hero. Sadly, that possibility is tragically cut off when Peter falls in battle and is ruthlessly executed by the Kingpin. And it won't work. They're gone. It's so sudden and unexpected that for a brief moment, it's easy to think Peter somehow survived. Unfortunately, the next scene leaves no doubt as to Peter's fate, as Mary Jane is shown delivering a public eulogy for her dead husband. Although this particular universe gains a new Spider-Man in Miles, the death of Peter Parker hits hard. We all have powers of one kind or another. But in our own way, we are all Spider-Man. Number 12, Stegosaurus, Fantasia. This is definitely one of the bluntest deaths in all Disney movies. In the film's Rite of Spring segment, the peaceful lives of the herbivorous dinosaurs are interrupted by a ferocious T-Rex. All the dinosaurs successfully flee, with the exception of one slow stegosaurus. Being a Disney movie, you'd expect something to come along and save the innocent creature. While the stegosaurus puts up a good fight, his predator naturally triumphs. It's a truly grounded depiction of nature, but that's just what's so scarring. Number 11. Stoic. How to Train Your Dragon 2. No. When you play with fire, you're gonna get burned. During a heated battle against the ruthless dragon trapper, Drago Bloodvist, Hiccup's loyal Night Fury Toothless is turned against his friend. Under the control of Drago's mind-controlling Bewilderbeast, Toothless launches a fatal plasma bolt at Hiccup, who's saved at the last moment by his father Stoic. Son! Dad! No! 
Unfortunately, the burly Viking is no match for Dragonfire and succumbs to his injuries. In his grief, Hiccup drives Toothless away, as the knowledge that his own dragon killed his father is too much to bear. Having just reunited Stoic with his long-lost wife, Valka, Hiccup's desire to have both his parents in the picture goes up in smoke with his father's passing. No. Number 10, Maleficent, Sleeping Beauty. Now shall you deal with me, O oh Prince, and all the powers of hell. You'd be hard pressed to find a Disney movie with a bigger, more exciting final showdown than Sleeping Beauty. In the film's climax, the wicked Maleficent decides to bring her A-game to the table by calling on the powers of hell and taking on the form of a fire-breathing dragon in a garden of thorns. Thanks to the three fairies' magic, though, Prince Philip strikes Maleficent in her black heart with his virtuous sword. Thus, a ghastly villain meets her gruesome end, notably shedding some fairly graphic blood for a Disney movie. Thou sword of truth flies swift and sure, that evil die and good endure. Number 9, Dr. Facilier, The Princess and the Frog. Dr. Facilier is literally dragged into hell in this scene from The Princess and the Frog. Facilier believes he has the upper hand with demonic powers on his side, but he underestimates Tiana and her sticky tongue. No! No! With his voodoo charm destroyed, Facilier's friends from the other side appear to collect their debt. In satanic Mardi Gras fashion, an army of masks, dolls, and shrunken heads take Facilier to their world, whether he's ready or not. The moral of the story? Don't screw with voodoo. I just need a little more time. Oh, no, please help me. Number 8, Optimus Prime, The Transformers, The Movie. Hey, run, Blaster! Save yourself! A good leader brings out the best in his or her followers, but they shouldn't have to die to make it happen. Through Optimus Prime, an entire generation of kids found out the hard way what true leadership looks like. In a shocking first act twist, the Autobot leader sustains life-threatening injuries in a battle with his arch nemesis Megatron. Instead of making a miraculous recovery, Optimus dies surrounded by his friends. Prime, you can't die! Do not grieve. With his dying breath, Optimus passes down the matrix of leadership to a young Autobot named Hot Rod, who seems ill-equipped to follow in Prime's footsteps. While Optimus was resurrected the following year in the Transformers TV series, his death would leave a lasting impact for decades to come. Use the power of the Matrix to light our darkest hour. Number 7, The Evil Queen, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> The evil queen might have succeeded in offing Snow White, but she soon learns that even monarchs can't get away with murder. As the seven dwarves race back to the cottage, the queen absconds up a nearby mountain and attempts to crush her pursuers with a giant boulder. Cat. Oh, what are you? When a lightning bolt strikes the cliff, though, the queen becomes the first of many Disney baddies to fall to their death. Even if the fall didn't kill her, the boulder most certainly did, providing dinner for some lingering, hungry vultures. Number 6, Ursula, the Little Mermaid. Ursula is already a pretty terrifying presence on her own. How can you make her any more intimidating? How about by having her grow like a hundred feet, giving her an all-powerful triton, and bathing her in a whirlpool of chaos? The only thing more frightening than Ursula herself is how she perishes, as Prince Eric impales her with a ship, sending the sea witch to a watery grave. No matter how old you are, this is total scary overdrive, and it was all brought to you by the dark magic of Disney. Number 5, Littlefoot's Mother, The Land Before Time. Look, up there. A tree star. It is very special. 
Many animated movies depict children losing a parent, but very few offer up scenes as emotionally traumatic as the death of Littlefoot's mother. After witnessing his mother fight off the vicious sharp tooth, young long neck Littlefoot is separated from her during a massive earthquake. As a nightly downpour rolls in, Littlefoot finds his mother slumped on a pile of rocks, struggling to breathe and close to death. Not sure I can, Littlefoot. Yes, you can. <sighs> Get up. Distraught, Littlefoot begs her to get up but slowly realizes the truth as his mother tells him she'll always be with him. As the camera pulls out, viewers are left with the haunting image of a son losing his mother, a reminder that at some point we'll all face a world without our parents in it. Let your heart guide you. It whispers. So listen closely. Number 4. Judge Claude Frollo, The Hunchback of Notre Dame all my life you have told me that the world is a dark, cruel place, but now I see that the only thing dark and cruel about it is people like you. Frollo deludes himself into thinking that he's a righteous man and soldier of God, when in reality, he's committed every deadly sin in the book. His lifetime of sinning and hypocrisy finally catch up to him atop Notre Dame. Leaving so soon? <laughs> Before he can do Quasimodo and Esmeralda in, Frollo finds himself standing under a crumbling gargoyle. Staring a devil in the face, Frollo drops to his final resting place in a sea of hellfire and molten copper. It's an end that's as fitting as it is terrifying. And he shall smite the wicked and plunge them into the fiery pit. Number 3. Clayton, Tarzan. You there! Take what you can back to the boat! <laughs> I've got some hunting to do. This death seems more like something out of a Final Destination movie than a Disney animated feature. Sure, there's no gore, but there might as well be. In the midst of a jungle brawl with Tarzan, Clayton finds himself tangled in a cluster of vines. <laughs> Unaware of the vine wrapped around his neck, Clayton gets reckless with his machete and hangs his head in defeat. The only glimpse the audience gets of the body is via its shadow, which is almost as haunting as seeing the actual carnage. Wait, don't! <laughs> Number 2. Charlie B. Barkin – All Dogs Go to Heaven Goodbye, Charlie. <laughs> Although the movie's title says it all, there's really no way to properly prepare for watching a cartoon dog die. After escaping from the pound, Charlie B. Barkin is betrayed by his former business partner, Carface Carruthers. Carface and his accomplice killer get Charlie drunk, blindfold him on a dock, and hurdle a runaway car at him, knocking the poor dog into the water. <laughs> Kill it, shut up, shut up, shut up! Can't keep a good dog down! It's unclear if Charlie's cause of death is from the impact of getting hit by a car or from drowning. Either way, Charlie winds up at the pearly gates, but that doesn't excuse the fact that viewers just watched an intoxicated German Shepherd get run over by a car. Are we sure this is a movie made for kids? Where am I? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. So many dead rabbits. Watership down. Men came, filled in the burrows. Couldn't get out. Featuring shocking scenes of violence against bunnies, this infamous animated movie has terrified adults and children alike for decades. In fact, no less than 63 rabbits die on screen over the course of the movie's runtime. Rather than settle on one scene in particular, here are a few disturbing standouts. It's the black rabbit of Inlay. Don't talk like that, they'll go far. We go by the will of the black rabbit. Holly's memory of the Warren's destruction, which depicts nearly half of the film's total bunny deaths, Big Wig choking on his own blood as he's trapped in a snare, and of course, Bob the dog mauling the attacking Ephrafa rabbits. Taken as a whole, these scenes add up to a film that would make even the most violent Disney production blush. Can you run? I think not. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.